today's video, we're going to be looking at something a little bit different than normal. We're going to be reviewing an investment portfolio that I opened only two months ago. Specifically, this is going to be about dividend investing as well, because this is something I'm wanting to use to generate some sort of a cash flow in order to build something else. Why dividend stocks is because I'm wanting to generate a cash flow so that I can have that money that comes from the dividends that are generated from these stocks and use that money for other purposes so I don't have to stretch my budget any further. I'm using the dividends that I'm getting from these stocks in order to fund my other investments, whether it's options trading or actually funding a business, but generating more cash flow for me. I wanted to use these dividend funds that I'm building here in order to build that out. The reason that I'm doing this specifically right now with the amount of money that I'm putting into it is because in the past year, my mortgage was artificially increased because of an underpayment from the previous year. The escrow in my account was, was underpaid. The bank made a miscalculation. And so they required me to repay that back over the next year which cost me $300 more in my mortgage. Well, now that that's paid back and my escrow is in balance, I have that money back in my budget in order to use. And instead of putting that towards other things, I decided to take that money, redirect it into this account. And so I'm putting about $5 a day into four different dividend stocks. So that's investing $20 per day in four different dividend stocks. To look at these four different stocks, technically it's five because I started with one and switched to another. So there's technically five of them here. But going on to these stocks, we can look and see that three of these are going to be real estate companies, Brightspire, AGNC and Invitation Homes are all real estate related companies. AT&T is a telecommunications company and ProShares Bitcoin Strategies, BITO, is a Bitcoin futures ETF that happens to pay a really good dividend currently. Now that one specifically carries a little bit more risk since it's a futures ETF. I understand there are increased risks with that and I'm okay with that for the time being. I may switch that down the road, but for now, I'm okay with that being in my portfolio and getting the, the dividend returns from that. So if we look first at Brightspire Capital, this one only makes up 1.71%. I only purchased this one for three days, so I invested $15 into this one and I had some additional holdings in this as well. So it's a little bit extra. I had $1.28 in it before this started. So total $16.28 is what it cost me for this. My current market value is $15.11. So this one's gone down about 7% since I started. Now it has returned six cents in dividends. So that's Got to account for something, right? The next one is AGNC. This one also is real estate. Now I currently have $215 in this one, which is 24.32% of this portfolio. Now this one actually has gone up in value since I began purchasing it about 1.49%. This one has a dividend yield of 14.1%. And this one actually has not paid out a dividend to me yet. So I don't have any dividend payments from this one. That's expected in, in the next month or so. Baito is the Bitcoin futures ETF. This one is currently valued at $194, which is about 22% of my portfolio currently. This one is actually down in value of down to 6.81%. However, it does return a very generous 48% dividend. Now for Baito, I have had one dividend payout for this one and it was at $6.19. And this actually pays out monthly. So that dividend is the payment that I got for one month's worth of investment. Just a disclaimer, I did have a little bit of investment in this one previously before I started investing in it. I had about $3.71 invested in this one prior to beginning these $5 investments. So there's a little bit of extra there, but not too much. But yeah, that $6 in dividends should probably effectively double for this next time. So I should see about a $12 dividend payment in the next month for this one. Now the next one is AT&T, which is up about 4.74% so far. Now the dividend for this one is much more modest at 5.63%, but the reason that I'm investing in this stock specifically is because I believe that there is some upside potential on the valuation of this stock. If we look at the chart for AT&T over the past five years, it's actually down quite a bit over the past five years and just in a recovery phase right now, it's currently moving up a good bit. So I think that the value on this stock is going to continue to increase. And so that's why I'm investing in this stock. It has not yet paid out a dividend to me yet. So currently the only value that I have from this one is the 4.74% return that I've got from this. And this one is valued at $207.36 currently, which is almost $10 of valuation increase. Now the final one on this list is Invitation Homes. And this one is the one that I started three days later and then I moved over from Brightspire to begin funding this one. So it's a little bit behind the other ones, valued at $184.91, which is about 21.64% of my portfolio. This one actually has increased 7.7% so far, so about $14.24 
that I've gotten gotten in gains from this one from the stock appreciation value. Now this one, the dividend is much more modest at 3%, the smallest dividend that I have. But I feel that Invitation Homes has a lot of upside potential with the possibility of the Fed rate cut coming up. I think that that may benefit the real estate market a little bit. And so these valuations for some of these real estate companies may, may go up. Now, Invitation Homes has also not paid out a dividend yet. So nothing to report there quite yet. We'll see a dividend payment on that probably in the next month or so as well. Now, it is my intention to begin to revisit this every so often. It could be one to three months that I'm going to review this portfolio, but also definitely annually that I'll be reviewing this to track my annual progress and to see where things stand on this every year. But also at some point, I'll probably begin to also track my option strategy that I'm going to be using in this account as well, because that's the other half of, of this Robinhood account. The reason that the, this account actually is in Robinhood is because I find that the options platform is very easy to understand if you're wanting to learn new concepts. And there are a few concepts that I'm learning here. I am using some other platforms to test as well. So I may switch over to a different platform in the future. But right now, I feel like that Robinhood is the simplest to understand what's going on whenever you're purchasing an option. Now, just a quick disclaimer here. This is what I'm doing for my investment portfolio. I don't know that this is something that everyone would want to follow. This is different than what most people probably would recommend, and I understand that. I know that this is a different track than most people probably would or should do for their investment, but I have a different purpose for this than probably most people would as well. So this is maybe unique to me or someone like me. This is just giving you an example and a track record just to see what what I'm doing and if it works or if it doesn't work, because it could be very possible that this does not work out as well. So investment comes with risk. You should know that. And if you are investing and you're not sure about what you're doing, then you should definitely speak with an advisor on that to learn a little bit more about how to invest and to get some good advice on, on the direction that's right for you. So again, some of the best things that you can invest in in life is in those that you love and in yourself. But don't stop there. Keep investing. Until next time.